Hello, this is Pete from Essex Ham's Ham Train with some important news for anyone who's taking an amateur radio exam in the UK in 2024. The reason for this video is that Ofcom has now released a new licence. This came into effect from the 21st of February 2024. It's good news as it gives a lot of extra freedom to radio amateurs. Although the licence comes into effect from the 21st of February, the new exams covering the licence conditions don't come into effect until the 1st of September 2024. So what does that mean for exams? If you're taking an exam this year, you'll be tested on the old licence conditions up until the end of the 31st of August 2024. For exams taken on or after the 1st of September 2024, you'll be tested on the new licence conditions, the ones that came in in February. The frustrating thing for both trainers and students is it does mean we have a six month crossover period. On the screen here you can see an example of how this is going to be a problem. Imagine this was a July 2024 training course. For students taking their exam before September, the answer would be no, but for those taking their exam after September, the answer would be yes. It's a little bit messy, and this video is here to try and help students during the transition. Previously, the RSGB had announced that we'd have a new syllabus from April 2024, meaning only a month of transition. But for reasons best known to the RSGB, they've applied to Ofcom for a delay, and we're now not looking at the new syllabus coming in until the 1st of September. We did ask the RSGB if they'd consider discussing this with trainers or students, and the answer was that they'd received positive feedback about how this would affect everyone. As we didn't quite believe this, we ran our own poll, and sure enough, 79% didn't think this was a great idea. Nonetheless, we are where we are, so the licence went live on the 21st of February 2024. For exams up and including the 31st of August, it's on the old conditions, and on or after the 1st of September, it's the new conditions. Let's take a look at the changes. The big one affects power limits. Foundation increases from 10 to 25 watts. Intermediate increases from 50 to 100 watts. And full goes from 400 watts to 1 kilowatt. As before, restrictions apply on certain bands. As a reminder, radio amateurs are required to complete an EMF assessment if their station's power exceeds 10 watts EIRP, which is 6.1 watts ERP. With the power levels increasing for all three licence levels, we're expecting radio amateurs to have to update their existing EMF assessments. Next, regional secondary locators. That's the W, M, I, J, U and D that goes as the second character of call signs. They now become optional, with the exception of the two call sign series used for intermediate. For example, 2E0, QQQ. So from the 21st of February, these are completely optional. Many people will still use them. If you're taking your exam before the 1st of September, remember these are mandatory. We have a new regional secondary locator available at Foundation and Full. It's the letter E. For example, ME7QQQ or ME0QQQ. Of course, the E is already as part of the Intermediate 2 series. For example, 2E0QQQ. And talking of the Intermediate 2 series, the 2.0 and 2.1 ranges are to be replaced with M8 and M9. This will be phased in fairly slowly over the next year or so, as Ofcom has to update their computer system. On to suffixes. Slash M, slash A and slash P all still remain optional. But from the 21st of February, any suffix can be used. For example, slash garden or slash beach. There are some changes to the supervision rule. Under the old rules before February 2024, you could supervise anyone else that had an amateur radio license. This has now been changed so that you can supervise anyone, whether they have a license or not. But of course, you are still required to follow the terms of your license condition and use your call sign. For exams before the 1st of September, it's license holders only. On or after the 1st of September, you can supervise anyone. Changes at Airborne. It's now permitted at 0.5 watts EIRP, but only on the primary bands. That applies to all three licence levels. As a reminder, for exams before the 1st of September, airborne use is not permitted. 
changes to for maritime and the wording has been changed so that it's now permitted in the UK and territorial seas. Operation is now permitted aboard any aircraft or ship registered in the UK, Channel Islands or the Isle of Man in international waters or international airspace. For exams before the 1st of September, remember that foundation and intermediate licences are not permitted to operate from a vessel at sea. There's also now some more flexibility when it comes to beacons and gateways. All three licence levels can now use low-powered beacons and gateways below 5 watts ERP. There are updates for repeaters at intermediate and full. Again, operating repeaters under 5 watts ERP is now permitted. There's a new data station type that's been added. This is intended for machine-to-machine -machine operations that carry third-party traffic. For example, packet stations, APRS stations, data trunk links and RF mesh networks. At the time of recording, the RSGB hasn't released the new syllabus, so we're not 100% sure quite what will be examined. For exams before the 1st of September, please ignore this slide. And some good news for foundation license holders, as building your own equipment is now allowed. For exams before the 1st of September 2024, remember that the foundation license does not permit the on-air use of own design and modification of transmitting equipment. A reminder that because of the changes, there are new schedules and band plans in place, so when taking your exam, you'll need to make sure that you bring the correct booklet into the exam with you. And that's it for our summary of changes. As a reminder, the new license conditions went live on the 21st of February 2024. If you're taking an exam up to and including the 31st of August, you'll be tested on the old license conditions. Exams from the 1st of September will be on the new license conditions. Those of you taking our free Foundation Online course, do be assured that we'll be keeping the course up to date and adding notes as appropriate, so you shouldn't get too confused. If you do have any questions though, please do get in touch. Details on the screen. That completes our look at the 2024 license changes and how it will affect students in 2024. Thanks for watching and best of luck. 73. This feature was brought to you by Essex Ham.